So now we shall start with the first chapter, that is your introduction part. Soil is a three phase system. The next thing is uh, your index properties, and all those things we shall discuss today in the first class. So these are the basic things which you should know in geotechnical engineering. There are some basic definitions that you have to buy, you have to remember. So there are some formulas. There are more number of for, uh, formulas in this chapter only. So these are the basic formulas which you require later in other chapters also. And you should know the meaning of all the things, whatever we discuss today. The first thing is father of soil mechanics. Who is the father of soil mechanics now? So it's nothing but his name is Dr. Carl Terzaghi. He is the father of soil mechanics. Now, what is soil? How do you define soil? So, there is a not uh, there is no specific definition. It depends upon the person who is going to define the soil. For example, if you ask any farmer, what is soil to him? So he will tell it is nothing but a material which helps me to grow some plants, to grow some things. If you ask a geologist, he will uh, define soil in a different way. So according to us, according to soil mechanics, what is soil? Soil is nothing but it is unconsolidated material. Soil is uh, unconsolidated material which is formed by weathering or disintegration of rocks. So basically what is soil? Soil is an unconsolidated material which is formed by weathering or disintegration of rocks. And also uh, soil is also formed by uh, decomposition of some organic material or organic matter. Now what do you mean by unconsolidated? Unconsolidated means it is nothing but loose material. It is loose material. Now what is this weathering or disintegration of rocks? You know the meaning of weathering and you know the meaning of disintegration. Now what are the types of weathering? Physical weathering may take place and chemical weathering may take place. Here, physical features cause the physical weathering. Here, some chemical reactions are responsible for chemical weathering. Don't remember in detail one or two points, it is more than sufficient for you. Whatever the soil which is formed by physical weathering or physical factors that is non-cohesive in nature. Here the soils are cohesive in nature. Now the next thing, what are the physical factors which cause physical weathering? There are many things, wedging action of ice, next abrasion, penetration of plant roots, temperature changes, etc. These are some of the physical factors which are responsible for physical weathering of rocks. When you come to the chemical weathering, you know this is mainly due to chemical reactions. Whatever the chemical reactions you know, all the things you can uh, write there. Hydro hydrolysis, oxidation, hydrolysis, oxidation.
what are the what do you mean by these things not at all required for us only thing is that chemical weathering takes place for this chemical weathering chemical reactions are responsible so what are the chemical reactions that you know you can write there now the next thing which is important see here yeah? what i have done is i have taken a rock here due to temperature changes due to some things what has happened is this rock has disintegrated and soil is formed this soil whatever is formed is not going to stay here only some amount of the soil it may stay there but some amount of the soil particles are transported this is this integration takes place so after disintegration whatever the soil particles are formed those are transported and deposited at a place and then finally upheaval takes place the main important thing is here the main important thing here is transported the word transported how the soil particles are transported from one place to another place there are some agencies that transfer the soil particles from one place to another place the first agency the first agency is water the first agency is water the second agency is air now whatever the soil particles which are carried by water which are transported by water those are known as alluvial soils now next whatever the soil particles which are transported from its origin to any other place by wind or air these are known as aeolian soil soils aeolian soils now the next thing so these are the two major agencies which help for the transportation of soils there are other agencies also those are not so important so due to gravity also some amount of the soil particles may change their place due to gravity so some large size particles may may be transported due to the gravity those are known as colluvial soils now next so what may be the other agency which help in transportation of these soils glaciers whatever the soil which is transported by these glaciers are known as glacier deposits so these wordings are important for you please try to remember other than this uh, there are lacustrine soils soils deposited in lake beds similarly there is another word in the reeds marine soils soils deposited in sea beds so these are the important wordings which you have to remember so in the introduction part introductory part 
these things are more than sufficient for you. Now what we shall see is, we shall see the basic things of geotechnical engineering which you have to know. Yeah, there are many definitions, no other way you have to remember all those definitions and all those definitions are important. We shall see, we shall list one by one what are those definitions. Before that, we have to discuss a small theoretical topic that is soil as a three phase system. We shall see what is that. as a three phase system. Now soil is a three phase system. What I have did is, you know Rahul Gandhi, he is not having any work, I called him, I told him to bring a soil sample from the ground. So he went to the ground, there is a big playground here, consider. So he has brought a soil sample. Now this soil sample, whatever he has brought, what does it contain? Mainly what does it contain? That we have to see. So it mainly contains three things. First thing is soil solids are nothing but your soil particles. Then it may contain water. or this soil sample may contain air. These three are the main constituents of this soil sample. For my engineering representation, what I do is, I am going to separate out this soil solids, then I am going to separate out this water whichever is present, then I am going to separate out the air whichever is present, then I am going to draw a figure. Whatever the obtained figure, whatever the figure I am going to obtain, that is nothing but soil is a three phase system. So, from this soil sample, I have separated all the soil solids this represents soil solids. Now next I have separated water. This represents water. And whatever the remaining thing is there, that is nothing but your air. Let this total volume of the soil sample be V. That I will take it as capital V. volume of solids, so this will be the volume of solids, I will represent it as Vs, this is the volume of water Vw, then finally this is volume of air. Now the sum of these two things that is volume of air and volume of water Va plus your Vw is equal to volume of voids volume of voids that I will call it as Vv Vv represents volume of voids similarly in terms of weight what I will do is let Wd or Ws be the weight of solids or soil solids. This be the weight of water. 
डब्ल्यू डब्ल्यू देन फाइनली दिस बी दी वेट ऑफ ये ना यू नो वेट ऑफ एयर इज नेग्लिजिबल हेन्स वी टेक इट इक्वल टू जीरो हेन्स वी टेक दैट इक्वल टू जीरो देन फाइनली यू नो वॉल्यूम ऑफ वाइड सिमिलरली वेट ऑफ वाइड इट इज इक्वल टू वेट ऑफ वॉटर इट सेल्फ वेट ऑफ एयर इज नेग्लिजिबल बिकॉज ऑफ दैट वी टेक कंसिडर इट एज जीरो सो वॉट एवर दिस वॉट एवर दिस फिगर वी हैव ड्रॉन दिस इज नथिंग बट the figure of the soil sample only only the thing is that i have separated all the particles all the separate things then i have given it a new look so this is nothing but your three phase system soil is a three phase system now this volume of voids it includes volume of air and volume of water in a given soil sample in a given soil sample volume of solids will not change this volume of water and volume of air may change if you add some more water what happens is that air escapes and whatever the voids which are present those are filled by water so this is the basic figure which you have to remember so now based on this and other two figures you are having many definitions all these definitions are important so in detail what we shall do is one by one we shall list all the things here in this chapter definitions are important so we shall list uh, all the things whichever are uh, there for us and whenever required we shall use those things